Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time it is the V240 Lurker from Vetro. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler and yes, it has AM5 and LJ1700 support. Right then, so when it comes to the Vetro Lurker V240, I've done two different types of benchmarks. Now, what I've done for the first testing is out of the box, basically a 1500X where you would get it with basically zero touching the BIOS, not even enabling anything, just leaving it standard. So then you get a baseline and then I've done it then with XMP and with it unlocked. So when it comes to Cinebench R23, the idles are 32 Celsius. Some of the lowest idles I've seen in a very long time. The max was a 63. Blender Classroom, the idles are 33 Celsius. The max was a 62. Blender BMW, the idles are 33 Celsius. Max was a 62 again. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 33 Celsius with a max at 57 Celsius. Now, that is out of the box settings for a 1500X. So this is with XMP enabled. So this is the this is now the one with PBO enabled with all the limits unlocked so it can pull or draw as much as it wants. So Cinebench R23. Now, the idles were higher this time, and the idles were 35. The max was an 82 Celsius. Blender Classroom, the idles were 37. The max was an 81 Celsius. Blender BMW, the idles were 37. The max was an 80 Celsius. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 37 Celsius with a 72 Celsius max. That is the benchmarks. Let's get back into the rest of the video. Right then, so, you saw the B-roll, I will say it looks absolutely fantastic, especially lit up. You've also seen the thermals, the performance, considering that it's a 240, and the previous 240 I did review, didn't perform very well. It was literally up to thermal throttle load. This performed around what any other 240 should now yes it does utilize the am4 backplate which is a big positive for me if you use something that's ready there then you'll get a thumbs up from me now the pump header isn't four pin i would have liked four pin but of course for for a pump a three pin is fine the fans they are four pin very good thing they are three pin five volt ARGB which is also good because you can daisy chain them and yes the overall look as well as the RGB soap me right there as you know I love RGB yeah it's not to everyone's taste but I've got a passion for it I love the fact that you can change any color you want to anything and this particular AIO does look rather gorgeous with its RGB now the performance Honest, remember now, when I do performance benchmarks or thermals, now, they aren't representative of what you're going to get while you game, okay? Because in gaming, the CPU isn't utilized as much as, say, the GPU. The GPU will be utilized more than the CPU. Now, there aren't games out there, really, that are going to utilize a 5900X to its full potential, especially gaming anyway. Yeah, maybe three, maybe four cores, but that's it. And generally, it's probably the fastest cores when it comes to gaming because of latency as well, you know. So, but of course, if that is your worry, then I will say you won't get these type of temperatures during gameplay. Now, Starfield, on the other hand, I don't know. I have played it. And, of course, the CPU temps... I haven't really got into monitoring that, so I can't really speak for for Starfield. But generally, gaming don't utilize 
more than maybe three to four cores. It's sometimes it utilizes more or less. So it all depends on what game you're playing. If you're playing something that's like CS Go, that's primarily the best two cores or maybe one core that can hit the highest frequency. So, you know, that's not really going to generate the heat, especially one to two cores. That's not going to generate a lot of usage. So for anything like gaming or anything like that, this is perfect. It will also handle uh, editing because, as you saw, this these are continuous tests, 10 minutes each time. So it will at least keep those temps. So, yeah. Look, it's a good AIO. I'm not a lover of the price. I will say that, that I like to be honest with you guys. At the moment, it's around the 90-ish pound mark. And personally, for a 240, there are better options out there. Like when some thermal right, for instance. They do 240s. Well, actually, they do, do 360s for 60 to 70 pounds. So, yeah. That is the only gripe I got with it. Other than that, there was no issues with mounting, no issues with noise. The fans, they're rather quiet. They aren't loud. The pump, I didn't hear it at all. And oh, other than that, it is actually a good option to buy. So if you want to buy it, the link would be down below. As usual, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And I'd love to, th uh, love to thank every single one of you for watching the videos and subscribing to the channel. Because... The more you subscribe, the more you watch, the more likes, comments. It really does get me more positive in bringing you guys more videos each week. Now, I have got a lot of stuff coming. I've just managed to get a deal with Gigabyte. They're going to be sending me monitors. I got a monitor coming from AOC. BenQ, I still need to follow up with them. Of course, I've still got the Height Y40 build to do for water cooling. I'm waiting on bits power, but of course, Raging Tech may come to the rescue on that, hopefully. But yeah, look, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And as always, this is Richard from Welsh Tech. Goodbye.